In this video, you're going to learn how to write recursive formulas for arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, as well as some that don't fall into either of those categories. So we're going to go through three examples, and I'm going to show you two different methods uh, to write these recursive formulas. So your teacher may show you a slightly different way. So I want to show you a couple different methods to hopefully um, help you understand this a little bit better. So for number one, what's the pattern here? We're going from 18 to 14 to 10 to 6 to 2, dot, dot, dot. How are we getting to the next term in this sequence or in this list of numbers? Well, if you said that you're subtracting four each time, you're absolutely right. So when you write a recursive formula, what you want to do is you want to tell the person what the first term is. So a sub 1 equals 18. And then you want to give them like a rule or like a you know an indication of how do you get to that next term. So one thing I want to show you really quick is, see this notation, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3? That tells you what term that you're on. Whereas, see 18 right here? This is like a sub 1, or 14, this is a sub 2. The sub just means like subscript, like it's a little bit lower, like a little bit below the line. And so that tells you what's the value of that third term. Oh, it's 10. What's the value of that fourth term? It's 6. But n is really just like what term you're on. So now we've got the value of our first term is 18, but to get to the nth term, the value of the nth term, what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous term, see n minus 1, and we're going to subtract 4, and this is when n is greater than or equal to 2, meaning for the second term, third term, fourth term, and, and so on. So let's test it out. Let's, for this is n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. Let's say we wanted to figure out what n equals 6 is. So a sub 6... Okay, so n is 6, that's going to be 6 minus 1, that's a sub 5, that's the value of this fifth term. We're going to then subtract 4, which gives us negative 2. But another way to think about it is when you see this n minus 1 right here, this n minus 1 tells you to go one term back, like one previous term, and then you subtract 4, and that's how you get to the next term. Once you see the pattern, you can just keep subtracting 4, subtracting 4 to get, you know, a number of terms uh, in a row. So this is one method. The other method that sometimes is used is like this. They'll say a sub 1 is equal to 18. So that's the value of the first term. We need some starting point. But then how do we get to the next term? Well, here we did a sub n. In this one, I'm going to do a sub n plus 1. So that's like, you know, one term beyond the nth term. So you're going to take whatever the nth term is, a sub n, that value, and you're going to subtract 4. But now I'm going to say when n is greater than or equal to 1, okay? So basically this is like if you were to put 1 in here, 1 plus 1 is 2, okay? So you're finding the value of the second term. But remember how we said n equals 1? So you take the value of that first term and you subtract 4. If you wanted to find the sixth term, in order for this to be 6, n would have to be 5, right? 5 plus 1 is 6. So a sub 5, that's the value of the fifth term. You subtract 4 and you get the the next term. So either method, whichever one you prefer, will work. Let's do another example. Say like for number two here. What's the pattern? How are we going from 125 to 25 to 5 to 1 to 1 fifth? What are we doing to get to that next term? Well, if you said dividing by 5, you're right. But dividing by 5 is like multiplying by the reciprocal 1 fifth, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start just like we did with this one. We're going to say a sub 1 equals the first term, the value of the first term, 125. But to get to the value of the nth term, we're going to take the n minus 1th term. Remember, that's the previous term. And we're going to multiply by 1 fifth. And that's when n is greater than or equal to 2, meaning when you're on the second term, third term, fourth term. Of course, a sub 1, we already know the value of the first term. So that's one option. The other option is a sub 1 equals 125. And then a sub n plus 1 equals a sub n times 1 fifth, and this would be when n is greater than or equal to 1. So either way, you can either think of like n plus 1, that's like one term, you know, beyond the nth term, like one term additional. You just take the value of the term that you're on, that nth term, and you multiply by 1 fifth. That's one way. This way is what I learned originally, and so I kind of stuck with it a little bit more. I just like to think of whenever I see n minus 1, I think about, oh, I just go back one term. So if I wanted to find this term here, I just go back one term, and I multiply by 1 fifth, and that's going to make this 1 25th. And you can keep repeating that pattern.
Okay, number three is kind of a little bit more challenging. So see if you can follow this one with me. See if you can see the pattern here. What are we doing to get to the next term, next term, next term? Well, here it kind of looks like we're subtracting eight, but then here it looks like we're adding one. So it doesn't look like it's consistent as far as adding or subtracting the same thing. How about multiplying or dividing? No, there must be some other pattern, right? Well, see if you can follow this pattern. It looks like 15 minus seven, that's eight. Seven minus eight, that's negative one. Eight minus a negative one, that's nine. So you see what's happening here? The first term we know is 15. The second term we know is seven. But to get to the nth term, okay, let's say for example this one here, we're gonna go two back, so that's a sub n minus two, and we're gonna subtract the one that's just one before it, n minus one, and that's gonna be for n greater than or equal to three, meaning like for the third term and beyond. So again, remember that n minus two, that means whatever term you wanna find, like say for example, if I wanted to find this one right here, I'd have to go two back, and then, find, and then I'd have to take the one that's one back, see n minus one, and then I would subtract. So that's one option. The other option is, again, we could say a1 equals 15, a sub two equals seven, that's a, uh, this is the second term, and then we could say a sub n plus two equals a sub n minus a sub n plus uh, one. And that's gonna be what? When n is greater than or equal to, to, uh, to one. So one plus two would be three. This would be to find the third term. So what we're doing is we're taking, so when n equals, let's say one, to find the third term, you're taking the first term, which is 15, minus one plus one, which is the second term, that's seven, 15 minus seven equals eight, which is the third term. If you want to see more about sequences in series, working with explicit formulas, recursive formulas, the formulas for finding the sum, et cetera, follow me over to my sequences in series review video right there. I'll see you in that video.